let's uh, let, we have one story left here, I think, right? Yeah, let's talk about the DNA uh, issue. That's pretty uh, pretty interesting stuff. We warned you guys. We told you about this uh, for a long time, but uh, don't use your real out. name when you do these genetic tests. Yep. You don't have to use your real name. They admitted to sharing genetic data with the FBI. Oh boy, shocker! There's also other things in many of these clauses for these companies. Uh, that do take your DNA, analyze it, and and put it back to you and say certain things about it. That might be, by the way, very inaccurate, some of these two. There's contamination. There are sloppy things. You can, you can in some cases, which is, I guess is a little bit better, you can actually download the raw data. And there's other services that actually have a better analysis of the, of the genetic data, and you can actually get a more accurate result. But as you experienced, Lana, you did two different ones because you lost uh, login information pretty, pretty for the different. first one. And yeah. it was actually... Pretty, pretty I mean, I guess the, the Baltic the part, I was, was same, almost entirely yeah. Eastern European, and then there was some Finnish and Northwest Russia one time, and then the next time it came back, and it was like um, mostly Eastern European, but then 25% 20 Baltic, Baltic? Yeah. like, it just, it just changes. You know? At the same time, as I said, I mean, they do kind of hone in on a region, and I mean, obviously, Western Russia is like right there by the yeah, Baltic. Yeah, it's all, you know? it's so all it's very like, close. Okay, so, you know. Yeah. But but uh, that they do that distinction of like okay here's the Baltic region and here's you, you know Russia yeah. kind of thing. But of course um, you know yeah. I my family's been mostly in they have been in Russia all this time so not, none of that was shocking to me. But a lot of Americans because they're such a mutts they I hate it when they trust just a hundred percent whatever the test. Oh I'm ten percent this and twenty percent that and forty percent and I have three percent this and two percent Ashkenazi and they just they take it all like it's just a matter of and fact. I'm really from Africa? And, yeah. Oh this is exactly. wonderful. Uh, Family Tree DNA uh, at at Home DNA testing company apologized for fa- failing to disclose it was sharing genetic information with the FBI to help solve rapes and murders. I mean, that's pretty. And I know that other companies do How? this too. And I know that other companies they sell, uh, you know, the the data to like third parties, which might not be FBI or crime. Uh, Solving Wait, units. But, but back at how would that work though? They they look for a name in their database and then they want to get their genetic material mm-hmm. instead of going to the perp and getting a sample. It's basically so it's like, like a backdoor to a, it? a database. So that if you are in a crime scene somewhere and you find genetic evidence, they have asked these companies to share that so that they preemptively can connect a name and an address or whatever okay. with that sample, right? So they could, you know. Well, obviously, they're not making all their money from selling tests. They're <laughs> they're selling data. Yeah. That's and how they, and they knew, money. remember, back in the, the 2000s, early 2000s, it was this huge goal, uh, the Human Genome Project. Uh, what was his name again? I did a whole piece about him. They mm-hmm. sold him as this kind of uh, Promethean character. It was like these bullshit stories of how he had crushed the, the heads of a snake. And it was like all this mercurial kind of Promethean lore around this guy. Uh, Craig Venter. Look him up. Oh, Craig, yeah, yeah. Craig Venter. Mm. And, of course, the Human Genome Project. Uh, they did this on behalf, and sh- this is a weird one, right? But the Department of Energy, that's that's who controlled, owned, and regulated the whole human genome project. Department of Energy. It's like, <laughs> it's like Matrix, right? There's like they've discovered that... Human resource. Th- it, truly human resource is in the genetics. It's, it's in fact pure energy. If we can decode this, if we can understand that, that's what it is, right? But anyway, Craig Venter in the early days... Uh, when he did this stuff, it was super expensive, obviously. It was like millions of dollars just to encode it. It became cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. But a way for them to make it profitable was partially, and also to acquire the, the data, is to, is to launch these kinds of companies that have, as you said, it's really expensive. It's getting cheaper, but it's even when they launched them, it was still very expensive to do each uh, test. Mm-hmm. So the profit margin was very uh, low, right? Mm-hmm. Very razor thin. So the way they they do make money is so selling it to third parties, mm-hmm. right? So it's not about you know you discovering your DNA and, and being all excited about it. Now I'm not against doing it. I'm just I just say do do several just different ones for accuracy and, and never and use wait. your real name. Never use your real name. There's some of them that offer like uh, what do you call it uh, gift cards and things cards. like or this. You, can you know, buy those throwaway Visa cards that you load up and, and yeah. buy it that way. So I mean, there's ways. Yeah, there's ways around it. it it's fun, but yeah, no no big surprise here. You know. Really, though, we've talked about this before, where this is going to go. It could lead up to genetic warfare, targeting certain people that they don't certain like. Certain traits, genetic certain traits. Certain traits they don't like. Yep. So yep. I think that that's where it's probably going to go in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I'm of the belief that I think that they're building like a, a super, like, artificial intelligence, me- overarching mega brain. It was literally like the creation of some kind of omni omnipotent being, like a Yahweh kind of figure, right? They, they, it will 
it will know everything, it will have access to everything, every database, every data system, it will be like analyzing everything and stuff like that. And if you start feeding things into this thing, everything from information to everything that's on, on the internet, uh, and, and to a certain extent, YouTube and even Facebook are already developing artificial intelligences, which has hundreds of thousands, if not even millions of hours of footage at its disposal, which it, it can analyze and process to try to learn human behavior. And and, and eventually they're seeking to use this uh, to, to weaponize this. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it's going to be artificial intelligence is going to be weaponized and it is going to use once it gets, gets access to the genetic data. Uh, it's going to use that to its um, advantage somehow. W- how that's going to play out, exactly what it's going to do, I have no idea. Uh, but I'm convinced it's it's like we're we're building a, just a, a a machine which is going to have no uh, consideration for human mm-hmm. life whatsoever. Mm-hmm. That's where I think this is going. We've seen the movies because <laughs> the movies are always right. No, but, they, but but it's funny though. The movies always kind of they always tell you that scenario. Mm-hmm. But then they actually Machines offer you the, the, the technology that like actually leads to those things. Yeah, actually, it's a good thing. We're helping. Uh, we're helping. Helping. We're helping individuals with um, that have no arms. Right? You can uh, uh, put a sensor uh, helmet on his head. Right? And it senses and it controls these robot arms. That's what it's always about. Right? It's about helping the weak and stuff like that. And they sell it to us in that capacity. Help and then for it's security. Like, and we hoodwinked behind the behind the scenes with it. You know. <laughs> 